can be sometimes a little bit difficult and daunting doing a new product overview nowadays with a PCP air gun because so many products are vying for that same spot. And when you talk about them, it's, it can get a little, little bit more monotonous, you know, like, oh, you know, it's got a good barrel and it's got a, it's got a nice big air cylinder, good shot count, all of that. I promise you that is not a problem with this gun because this thing is so unique, it's not even competing with anything else on the market. And that's why I'm really excited to talk about this today. This is the new FX Panthera. It is so purpose-built for precision rifle shooting. And in this video, we're gonna go through a whole overview of this product, just so I can give you some technical information. I'm sure you're gonna see tons of videos uh, very shortly with lots of other guys talking about the same product from different angles. We're actually in Wilmington, North Carolina at the moment at the FX USA facility. I'm here with Ted's Holdover, uh, Rule from Airtech Hunting, Hein Froman. Uh, we've come out here and met up with guys like Ernest and Newman from FXUSA to just test this product in every way, find things that we can improve on. So just a disclaimer, some of the things you see here will be tweaked slightly for the production version, um, but this is so close to what you're going to see in production that, um, yeah, we can talk about it today. So a quick overview just to start things off. This is built for precision rifle. And when I say precision rifle, that's a very broad term for a lot of the, the sort of, um, you know, NRL 22, you get small local matches, guys are shooting with rim fires, and then of course you get the precision rifle with centerfire rifles like NRL Hunter, uh, NRL Race Gun, PRS series. And a lot of those guys are looking at rim fires and air rifles for trainer rifles. So there's a big demand for, for stuff like this. And one of the main issues with all existing air guns on the market is that they, from a form factor perspective, a lot of them aren't really well balanced enough. They've got to be modified heavily to, to balance in a way that you would use them for competition. Um, they're a little bit top heavy. There's all these things that, that can be improved on. And this gun is really the goal of it is to address a lot of those, um, not issues, but to just fine tune in a way that makes them suitable for those disciplines. So. Just a basic example, the balance. Look at this, with the with all these weights on here, I can get this thing, I can plonk this on a, on a, on a barricade, on a bag, it'll balance really well. And the heart right here, you can fit through small gaps. So as far as precision rifle shooting goes, it's pretty much built for that. But we're gonna go through some of the features, maybe starting at the back, ending in the front. And I'll tell you from, from my perspective, having scrutinized this thing over the last few days, what I'm really excited about um, when it comes to shooting with this thing. So I guess uh, starting at the back here, we have a uh, obviously a rubber, a rubber butt pad. It is adjustable, you can move it up and down. And then you've got two um, little screws over here that you can loosen to change your length of pull. And you can even change the angle of this butt pad too. And I assume that there will be lots of aftermarket um, parts for this quite soon, but um, this is pretty good as a factory option. Uh, moving slightly forward, we've got a, a bit of a dovetail rail over here. There will be a bag rider that you can get for this, and that will come down here and allow you, allow you to, when you're lying prone, shooting off a bag, get that, that good connection with the bag and get that perfect forward and backward movement, um, which is obviously very helpful, and once again, because it's so easy to attach and disconnect that, I expect that there will be plenty of, of aftermarket options. Uh, slightly forward again, 300cc bottle. It sounds like very little and it isn't much. However, this gun, think about the discipline it's, it's created for. You have 10 shots in a stage, you've got to make those 10 shots count. This will give you more than 10 shots at very high power and that's really all you need to make it count and you just fill up between stages just like you'd reload a magazine with your um, with your rim fire between stages. Um, there is a full point right over here if you wanna use this. And there's also an option to have it over here and whichever one you don't use, you can just plug up with this plug. So that's really up to you. It's also nice for, you know, if you're shooting tethered, wanna shoot a bench rest match with this. Some bench rest matches allow for tethering. Just plug it in here or plug it in here. You've got those options and you can just keep going. So that's awesome. Um, Obviously the air comes through the bottle through here and into the valve area. And that's one of the big, big improvements with this gun is that the actual valving is so 
extremely efficient. We'll talk about the numbers a little bit later, but the way that this whole thing is designed is, is, a, is a big step forward in technology, basically from anything else that's out there right now. Cheek piece is not only adjustable up and down, but it can actually be switched from left-handed to right-handed. And this particular cheek piece, they're using a, a new material on this. It's kind of a, a textured, stipple cheek piece. It just feels so much nicer on your cheek, especially for people who don't have caveman beard like me. Um, but obviously getting a cheek well perfect for your, uh, for your scope is really, really important when it comes to any sort of precision shooting. Moving slightly forward once again, um, you can see that this does connect to this block. This forehand also connects, which means that this block is actually quite modular. So once again, aftermarket parts, there will be options, but the point of having it relatively modular and easy to put together is that there may be other versions of this gun coming in the future, but obviously for the precision rifle, that's the one I'm focusing on today. Vertical grip will be coming as standard. It may not be this exact ergo grip, but FX will have a vertical grip as standard. That's kind of the way that everyone's doing things now with these precision rifle setups. So I'm, I'm really liking that. It also means there's plenty of space here between the bottle for your hand to fit in. So that's, that's really nice. And then obviously your trigger, the trigger blade on this, I think it uses the same trigger group as the crown and the trigger blade can be moved forward and backwards and obviously adjusted so that if you've got a uh, firearm that you shoot PRS matches with, this, can, this gun can be set up as a trainer rifle. You can make it feel the same as your other rifle, add weights to make it the same weight and, and balance as whatever other rifle you're competing in matches with. And you can set the trigger blade to be the exact distance as your other triggers, the exact movement from first to second stage, exact pull weight, and just try and replicate that to get a smooth transition from whatever you're shooting here to whatever you're shooting there, which is pretty awesome. The cocking lever is something I really, really like, basically because it feels the same as the impact. And as you know, I've been shooting uh, NRL matches with my impact and really enjoying it. And what I like about the impact is I can do this. If I've got multiple um, shots from one position, I can keep my eye on target and I can just move my hand. Don't have to change my my grip on the main grip. And it's that simple movement with my with the tips of my fingers. And this gun has pretty much the same movement here, which means that I get the same feel. But an upgrade on this gun is that it's got a, a ball detent which holds this back. This You can adjust to actually make this a bit harder or a bit softer. That means if you're moving between stages and you need to keep your bolt back, this isn't going to move anywhere. So there are aftermarket parts on other guns to, to make that happen, but no aftermarket need for this. It's built in there, which is fantastic. Safety over here, fire or safe. And then on the opposite side, we have the same macro and micro adjustment that you have on the impact. So if you're familiar with the impact and the ease of changing settings, that's right there and you can go anything from super lightweight pellets to basically 40 grand slugs. And I guess we should talk about power when it comes to this gun because many of you will be shooting NRL matches with let's say an impact and you're so used to having the, the power from an 800 more barrel shooting let's say 40 grain slugs or 34 grain slugs at 1000 feet per second plus. And I guess one of your main questions would be, can I get the same power out of this gun? Because obviously that combination of velocity and ballistic coefficient, if you're competing with rimfire guys, that's extremely important. You want that high BC projectile. And the answer is yes. In fact, the valving in this gun is so efficient that uh, with a 700 millimeter barrel in this gun, uh, we've been able to get basically 1,030 feet per second with a 40 grain javelin, which is basically where the 800 mil barrel on an impact maxed out. So you're getting that high power with, with a shorter barrel. And the benefit of that is that with, with a shorter barrel, you, the slug is in the barrel for a shorter amount of time, which means it's less hold sensitive. The longer your barrel is, the more hold sensitive your gun is because once you've pulled the trigger, if you move moving a little bit or um, you pull the shot, and the barrel, the slug is not out the barrel yet, that can cause you to actually have a point of impact shift, 
Whereas shorter, shorter the barrel is, the less point of impact shift you get. It's one of the benefits actually of having a rim fire with a little 16 inch barrel, so a lot less hold sensitive. And we're moving in that direction with air guns, which is fantastic. So we are shooting the new Panthera. And uh, this is a new gun that we just assembled. And we're shooting about a fist sized uh, steel plate at 275 yards. Let me give it a go. <laughs> Every single time. Talking about 40 grand slugs, the magazine on this gun, well, the magazine itself hasn't been redesigned, um, but the magazine halt that magazine gap here has, I think it's two millimeters deeper, which means that you don't have to uh, basically get a custom magazine cover for your magazine anymore to fit in a 40 grand 22 kill slug. The magazine back is the same as a Crown or Dreamline magazine, 18 shots, but the cover that they'll be offering is, is actually thicker, and that means that they can create more space inside for a deeper, mag um, a deeper space inside. You can fit those 40 grand slugs in easily, and you're not gonna have cycling issues because they are actually tightening up the spring inside the magazine, which will mean that those the magazine will cycle seamlessly with those heavy slugs, which is really great for guys who want to shoot those slugs in competition. The last thing you want is to have something hang up while you're trying to cycle the magazine. The magazine does actually fit quite nicely in here with high mounts. Uh, and you can see even with high mounts, you can get the scope pretty close to the barrel, which is what you want getting in those tight barricades. However, FX are also making a Smaller magazine, I think it will have 12 shots, which allow you to mount the scope even closer to the bore if you want to do that. And 12 shots is all you need, as I said, for a stage. You're shooting 10 shots, you've got to make those 10 shots count. If you have to reload your magazine between each stage, it's not a big deal. The main thing is for those 10 shots, you want this thing to be performing at the highest possible level. So that is awesome. Moving, well, I guess not really moving forward at all because the pick rail is just above all the stuff we've been talking about. But the Picatinny rail has 20 MOA of tilt built in, which obviously for long range shooting is really helpful. And actually, even if you're shooting at close range, it helps to keep your scope optically centered at sort of those closer distances, 30 to 75 to 100 yards. And optically centered scope is a clear scope. Um, nice thing about this, which hasn't been done on, on these guns previously, is that the pick rail, each slot in the pick rail is actually numbered. So if you want to use a quick disconnect Picatinny mount and you want to try and remember where you left it the previous time, just take a picture of it or write a note down, okay, you know, I've had this thing with a back lineup with slot number three. You can take that scope off a different gun, plonk it on here with the QD mount and your point of impact should in theory stay exactly the same. So that's a nice uh, option to be thought about. And before we move on from the block itself, cocking lever, I spoke about the cheek piece being ambidextrous. Cocking lever is also ambidextrous. You can switch from one side to the other. And FX have actually made like a, a cover for whichever slot you're not using so that no dust or anything that's kicked up can get in here, which is a, a nice addition as well. Really like that. Moving slightly forward once again to the, four, the front end of the block you will see the words AMP regulator and you'll see two gauges here. On a lot of sort of, let's say rifles in the past, you would have had your fill pressure on the end of your cylinder or you would have had your fill pressure or regular pressure underneath. This gun has your both your fill pressure and your reg pressure right over here where you can see them in your peripheral vision. If you're looking through the scope with your right eye and you open your left eye, you can glance down and see where your pressure is at. Um, and they're labeled as well. So at the top here, you've got your reg pressure. At the bottom, you've got your fill pressure. You'd fill it up to, let's say 250 bar, and you'd shoot down to whatever your reg pressure's at. And the reg is adjustable as it is on the impact. Very similar mechanism. Allen key goes in here. Turn it up or down to get your reg pressure where you want it. And then you'd fine tune your power after you've set your reg pressure to get the gun nicely balanced. So that's very, very cool. 
where does the reg the regulated air sit? Well, that's the new. Uh, that's the next thing we're going to talk about, which is so different to anything else that's ever been made before. Because this right here, this thing that looks like a giant shroud, is actually the plenum. Believe it or not, this thing's massive. I think it's 215 cc on this particular model, the 700 mil barrel. I think it's the same size on the 600 mil barrel model. But essentially, your plenum ends somewhere around here. This is very similar material and thickness as, let's say, uh, um, the main cylinder on an FX Dreamline. And what this does is not only allows you to shift your whole space over here much lower. So if you, you have to shoot through a ladder in a in a in a roll stage, you can fit through that small gap. It's something that a lot of air guns have had issues with in the past with that have like a big bottle at the bottom or even a barrel and a cylinder below that. Finding space to fit through small gaps is something that rim fires have no issue with but air rifles can have issues with and that problem is now solved. Barrel runs through the middle of the plenum and uh, is actually clamped as it, as it exits the plenum. So, so this kind of concerned me in the beginning when I heard about the concept because I thought well, you know, pressurized cylinder, as the pressure changes, you're going to get, uh, will you have the tube shrinking and growing and temperature changes and point of impact shifts. But actually, because this is your regulated air chamber, your air pressure stays the same throughout the whole process of um, shooting from beginning of your stage to the end of the stage, in fact, the whole match. And we've tested this thing where we've shot rapidly, we've shot inside and outside where the temperature climbs and grows. We've done everything. Point of impact has not shifted even a fraction of a millimeter. Um, and in fact, having the, the barrel run through the cylinder, it's like trying to make a, uh, an example here. It's like, have you seen those inflatable stand-up paddle boards? You can fold them up or roll them up, but when you pump them up and you put air in them, they get so rigid, you can stand in them in the waves and they feel like they're made of wood. Well, that's what this is like. Fill it with air, it becomes so rigid. This thing, you'd never think that, that there was a, a, a barrel, in, a 700 millimeter barrel inside here. It is so solid and uh, that's awesome because you don't have this massive floppy 700 millimeter barrel floating around here. It's super, super rigid. The valving in this block has been completely redesigned from scratch. Obviously, something to consider was power but valving in air rifles is something that's still continually improving and valving is really important because with the rimfire centerfire it's easy you've got that powder burning directly behind the bullet it's only got one way to go and that is out directly behind the bullet so it's quite easy to get efficiency from that expanding gas behind that bullet the gas doesn't have anywhere else to go in an air gun when that hammer hits the valve and the valve opens that air has to go has to get through a transfer port behind your projectile. And the way that it's been done on, on this gun is genius. The whole valve has been redesigned to, to allow air to be released very quickly. It allows you to get that acceleration to the point where you can get the same speed out of a shorter barrel. And from an airflow perspective, you're not losing energy by, for the air having to come through these 90 degree corners and through these transfer ports. The valve is actually entering right behind this, the, uh, the chamber where your slug sits at an angle. So it's not having to come through this 90 degree or U-turn to get behind the projectile and shoot out. It's right there. And that comes from your plenum basically being right here at the, at the projectile. It's not sitting underneath it where it has to come in a U-shape. It's right in front of it. So it literally just lets it through at a slant and the efficiency is out of this world. We were shooting over the chronograph yesterday afternoon and I couldn't believe it I was seeing. We were shooting 34 grand javelins out of 700 mil barrel, 145 bar reg pressure, 1,011 feet per second. And we got uh, 1,011 feet per second six times in a row on the, on the chronograph. It was showing duplicate one, duplicate two, duplicate three, 1,011, 1,011, 1,011, six times in a row. 2010 and then back up to 2011. It's insanely uh, uh, consistent and that's something that you simply will never get in a rimfire 
the primer in a rim fire is just not consistent enough to burn that powder consistently every single time you are never going to get standard deviations of zero <laughs> over 10 shots whereas uh, this gun that's actually achievable another good reason to switch to an air gun i guess one of the best parts about being here at fx usa is uh that's the warehouse right behind us but over here we have a hundred yard range just a bunch of containers lined up but it's all you need for a nice controlled environment if it's windy you can just put yourself in here get rid of the elements and actually see what the gun can do without any external factors which is great for testing purposes so yeah we've been out here for a while we've got the, the range in here where we can set the gun up and then we've got another basically 280 yards behind us there so it's been fun playing around with the new gun and we've really enjoyed it well, we're out here at the uh, awesome in indoor 100 yard range at uh, the back of FXUSA. We're just going to load this magazine up with 34 grain 218 javelins. Um, seems to shoot the 217s and the 218s equally well, but we're just going to pick the 218s. And we're going to send some lead down range. It seems like a bit of a, a waste of time to actually do an accuracy test because by now you would have seen Ted's video shooting at 300 yards and just nailing everything. Um, so you know this gun can shoot, but let's hit record on the scope cam and see what happens. this the long walk to results <laughs> you'll only really know when we get all the way down there what it looks like and then of course what happens in front of your block is where most of the issues have actually been with uh, with PCP air guns and NRL shooting because the whole balance of the gun is is really important you need a modular chassis system like you get with, let's say, an MDT chassis on your on your centerfire or rimfire rifle, to add weights, to add uh, an arc rail at the bottom where you can put accessories, you can put a Picatinny rail, all that stuff. Um, this gun has that. So what they've done here is they've put a barricade stop against the block, and directly above the barricade stock, they've put a rail running all the way underneath the cylinder. Now what this barricade stop does is it also braces this uh, this rail against the the block to keep it extremely rigid so this is a solid solid piece you've got an arca rail running all the way from the back to the front which means that you can add um, accessories like uh, bar pods this is an Accutac bar pod with the arca rail um, the one I've got on here is a uh, an Atlas bar pod and I've fitted a um, area 419 Arcarel shown to top of the Atlas. I can slide this anywhere I want on this Arcarel. I can have it in the front, I can have it in the back. The Arcarel, obviously, if you want to put a, a basically any tripod, put it down, you want to hunt with this gun, or you want to sit and just work on your gun, put the tripod out. You can clamp your tripod anywhere on this Arcarel and just have it balancing right there, set it where you want it. So that's obviously very nice. And there's all these aftermarket attachments for precision rifle like a base plate that you can shift up and down to your point of balance that's a bit wider for balancing nicely on a bag that's right there at the bottom also you've got a bunch of m-lock slots these m-lock slots allow you to fit picatinny rail so if you've got a bar pod that has a picatinny rail instead of an arca rail you can put your pick rail anywhere along here basically put your bar pod straight on and that'll work uh, very well and then you've got m-lock all the way along the side as well so on this gun i've added a bunch of weights to get my point of balance right over here so i can put this straight down on a bag i hardly have to touch it i can get on target and just touch my trigger and the gun will recoil very nicely and um, that extra weight is obviously what you want for for competitions so that's what all these m-lock slots are for 
And then in the front, we've got this bridge over the top, which is obviously straight from the factory with the gun. Um, we've got Picatinny rail up here. So if you want to shoot with a, a thermal clip on, you want to hunt with this gun, you can put a thermal clip on over here. You turn your gun into a night vision setup. You can put pick rails on the side to mount a torch or mount a chronograph, or whatever you want there. And it's just a very versatile system allowing you to customize it to whatever you want to do. Well, I spoke about how well this gun balances right over there. And we're going to do a quick demonstration. We've got two barricades here or, you know, typical obstacles you'd find if shooting a match or hunting. And we're going to pop the magazine in, hit record on the scope cam. And just look how uh, still we're able to keep the the crosshairs. Plonk it down here. You can pretty much just let it go when it's there. And it balances by itself, which is awesome. And I can get behind it really quick. Move around. And I don't have to put much work into keeping it still. Just point and shoot. It's a really cool setup. If you want to hunt with this gun, which is obviously an option, as I said, NRL and PRS is, is basically a, it's replicating what you would need to do out in the hunting field in order to take a shot. Having that ARCA mount at the bottom, if I need to hunt in long grass with a tripod, I've got that option. Or if I want to put something like this, I believe this is made by um, Sabre Tactical. It's just a rubberized plate at the bottom. I can slide this on the arca rail, clamp it down, and then this rubber piece can, it, it sticks nicely to a sandbag, or I can put this down on a, on a car door without scratching it up. Um, yeah, just tons of accessories, super modular. You can build this gun into whatever you want. Moving all the way to the front, if I had to unscrew this section here, you'd see that this thick tube turns into a thinner tube. So this is essentially a shroud. The barrel ends somewhere around here and the last inch or so uh, is an open space with holes for air to be redirected. So this is already kind of integrally suppressed, not that much, but it allows this space to be used to, to capture some of the gases leaving your barrel and redirect it back. And then there's a knurled end cap over here, half inch UNF threads, if you want to put a Donny or a Huggett or any silencer or even a muzzle brake on the end, you've got that option. I personally will probably either put a little brake or just leave this on as is. Um, in fact, the shroud also adds a little bit of um, rigidity to this last section of barrel. Not that it's even really needed, but the options there, if you want to put a little silencer on it and hunt with it like this, you can. And obviously with the shorter versions of this gun, 600 mil barrel, put a little silencer on, or even the 500, um, Put a nice long silence on that you've got an awesome hunting setup that can pretty much do the job for you for whatever you need it to do just to add um one of the latest offerings from fx is the display for the chronograph this obviously you, you switch on it automatically connects to the fx radar chronograph and you can do some velocity checks before a match or whatever what's nice about this is that you don't need your phone to make it work with the FX radar in the past, you've had to connect it to your phone by Bluetooth, turn on the app and do that. Now you can connect this screen up. There'll be two sort of dimples on the side of, of this piece here. So you can actually tighten your display on the front. And if you want to check your double check your velocity before a match during a zeroing time, or whatever, head out, take a few shots, get your average velocity over five shots and pop it into your Kestrel or your ballistic app. And there you go, you've got your firing solution nailed down and ready to go. As far as recommendations based on our testing over the last few days, obviously myself, Hein, Rolf, Ted, Ernest, Newman, um, we've got a wonderful bunch of guys here from all different backgrounds with tons of collective experience. Um, we've been shooting out to 275 yards shooting steel plates, grouping the size of a fist at almost 300 yards yesterday, just watching those slugs curl in, and obviously being do, doing testing at 150 yards, testing with weights, testing without weights, testing all the way up to 30 cal to see what reg pressures, um, 
work with what projectiles and trying to get a feel for this gun and what we've been seeing is insane apart from the tight um, velocity spreads and standard deviations that we've seen so far we've also had really really good success um, shooting the heavy slugs which is obviously the baseline of success when it comes to this style of shooting high ballistic coefficient equals less wind drift and wind is really the thing that kills you when it comes to uh, competing with other rim fires in, in a precision rifle match and um, with a 700 millimeter barrel 34 grand javelins we've we, uh, basically this gun idling at 145 bar on the reg um, we've been able to get these to over a thousand feet per second without any tungsten hammer or anything so this is a good baseline 34 grains that's it's a um, basically a 0.1 BC even slightly higher than that if you use a G1 BC and uh, this gets you pretty close to rimfire performance but allows the gun to basically idle a little bit less movement not pushing it as hard um, we've been shooting really tight groups with these and then the 40 grains as well 217 and 218 in the the uh, superior heavy liner with which is the one in 16 twist which is going to be standard with this gun so you don't have to buy that as an aftermarket part 40 grain slugs putting the reg up to about 175 bar we've been able to get uh 1030 feet per second from a 40 grand slug okay, we're going. that's basically 22 long rifle performance so with this gun balancing right here vertical grip low profile Down. low center of balance plenty of shots per full for getting Down. through those stages even with a small cylinder very efficient lovely feel when you uh when you pull the trigger it's a it's a much um sharper deeper thump sound it's not like a a drawn out shot like you get with many other pcps at this power um you have in my opinion the perfect air rifle setup for precision rifle style shooting so i cannot wait to actually get a production version of this in my hands and to go out to a match and just play around with this or even just to hunt with it I think um, taking some of these weights off, putting a sling on here, um, possibly even walking around with, a, with a, a carbon tripod, lightweight carbon tripod on my shoulder, going out to shoot ground squirrels or monkeys or whatever, this is a fantastic option and I don't think there's much more I can say about it. I think uh, we'll let the, the competition speak for themselves, but I have a feeling you're going to see a lot of these not only uh, at matches in the future, but on the podium because this is truly a top level performer. So there you go guys, that's the FX Panthera. Uh, absolute beast of a gun. Keep an eye out for some other guys' videos. Ted's out here, Rulf is out here as mentioned, and I think Rulf's gonna do a whole documentary on the whole testing process that we've been through over the last few days. Writing notes of, of minor tweaks and improvements to make the production version even better, all that stuff. It'll be quite an exciting watch, and I'll put a link to that down below as soon as it's out. Thanks for watching, uh, we'll catch you guys next time and keep an eye out for this beast. See you later.